Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about the best rep range for muscle growth. Now, I have talked about this in more detail in a previous video. So, in the interest of keeping this video as concise as possible, I will link that video up here. If you're on YouTube, you'll see that. If you're on Facebook, you won't see that. So, I don't know. Follow on YouTube. Okay, so I prefer to do research updates to old videos I've made because otherwise I would have to delete old videos and make them longer and longer and longer and longer. So I prefer to do shorter videos and just update them as new research comes out. So, assuming you've watched the previous video, you will know that the best rep range for muscle growth has become an increasingly tricky question to answer. A few years ago, it was widely regarded that 8 to 12 was a good rep range for muscle growth. If you wanted strength, you would train with lower repetitions and heavier weight. If you wanted muscular endurance, you would train with higher repetitions and lighter weight. However, over the last kind of couple of years, this question has become harder and harder to answer as the waters are muddied with new research. So we know that when comparing reps of three compared to 10, muscle growth between groups can be similar assuming volume load was equated. That's one study. We also know that comparing eight to 12 to reps of 25 to 35, can result in similar muscular growth even though volume is not equated between groups. Volume load is weight times reps times sets. So what that means is that knowing that 10 reps falls in the 8 to 12 bracket, I'll kind of combine them. So that 8 to 12 rep range, we've had similar muscle growth in studies with reps as low as 3 to reps as high as 25 to 35, which means that the 8 to 12 rep group or the 10 rep group, either or, did not produce statistically significant results in terms of muscle growth when compared to the other group. They did not have superior results, which means that the best rep range for muscle growth is now a much trickier question to answer. Now, what is the new study and where does it fit into this puzzle? So this is a 12 week study and it compares similar rep ranges to the study from last year. So rather than 25 to 35, it compares eight to 12, to 20 to, th uh, 20 to 25 reps. So it's a 12 week long study versus eight weeks previously, and it had 49 participants in the study. So all training was kept the same in terms of exercise selection and number of sets per exercise. The only difference was you either trained in the eight to 12 rep range or the 20 to 25 rep range. That was it. So over the course of 12 weeks, there were no statistically significant differences in terms of muscle growth between the two groups. Both groups increased lean body mass to a similar degree. So in terms of muscle growth, 20 to 25 reps was as good as the eight to 12 rep group. In terms of strength, strength increases were again similar in the inclined leg press, the leg extension, and the machine shoulder press. However, barbell bench press, the strength gains were greater in the 8 to 12 rep group. So how does this compare to the similar study from last year? Now, in the study from last year, again, muscle growth um, was similar between groups. However, strength increases were higher as tested by the back squat in the 8 to 12 rep group. And there was a trend for greater strength increases in the bench press in the 8 to 12 rep group. So in this study on its own, it would seem to suggest that rep range specifically is not the main driver of muscle growth or muscle strength because you can achieve similar with vastly different rep ranges. However, if we collaborate both of these studies together, the only exercises that had an increased strength greater to the comparative group was the eight to 12 rep range, where in this one, there was a higher increase in the bench press. In the old study from last year, there was a higher increase in the back squat, as well as a trend for a higher increase in the bench press, with all others staying similar. So, in terms of practical implications, what this means is, although strength gains may be similar in the new research study in three or four exercises, if you are training for maximal strength, it still makes sense to use heavier loads um, with lower rep ranges. Um, in terms of practical implications for you guys, there are a few things to know and a few things to be cautious of. So, 
in the new uh, the new study, participants had a training age of three to six years, which means that if you've been training for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, etc., do these results apply to you? It's impossible to say. Because if we look at the research study from 2015, it was noted that the participants typically trained with 15 reps or lower, which means that for the eight week period of that study, people training in the uh, 25 to 35 rep range, again in that study, it was classed as a novel stimulus, which means they may have got sharper muscle growth at the beginning, which may have leveled off if the study was longer. Also, it's worth noting that these compare two rep ranges specifically, i.e. you either train in the 8 to 12 or you train in the 20 to 25 or 25 to 35. Whereas in reality, it isn't that black or white. There's nothing to stop you training with lower reps at the beginning of your workout, transitioning to high reps over your workout, or even doing it over a workout cycle. So whilst this looks at eight weeks or 12 weeks of one of two rep ranges, for you it doesn't have to be that black and white because you can combine rep ranges within the workout or within the training cycle. Also, the other thing to note is that people often look at these and say, oh, high reps for, for the same muscle growth. Yeah, I'll take that, as if it's an easier option. High reps is not an easier option. In this 20 to 25 rep study, they use loads approximately corresponding with 30 to 50% of one rep max. And if we look at the study from last year, it was noted that approximately 50% of participants threw up at some point during the duration of the study. Because doing high reps to volitional failure is very, very taxing in terms of lactate production. So the idea that you can achieve similar muscle growth with higher reps and lighter weight seems appealing to a lot of people, but it can hurt like fuck. Also, note that there are potentially exercise specific benefits. So although three of four exercises didn't have strength increases with the eight to 12 rep range versus 20 to 25, the fourth one did. Now for you, doing eight to 12s are eight to 12 on a deadlift, for example, compared to 20 to 25 or 25 to 35 on a deadlift. Compare that to something like a bicep curl and you will know that the, the difference in terms of energy demand, pain level, etc., there is going to be a huge difference between them. So although this looks at a black and white, that rep range to that rep range, I would recommend caution applying it to specific body parts or specific exercises. Because in the real world, if you change the exercise program and keep everything very, very high rep, you will anecdotally find some things much, much harder to adhere to and potentially not get greater results from doing that versus the exercises and the exercise protocol used in the study. So, in short, high rep ranges can produce similar muscle growth to traditional hypertrophy rep ranges of eight to 12. In terms of strength, when taken to a volitional failure, there is often no difference in strength gains. However, all strength gain differences between these have favored the eight to 12 rep range. So if you are training for maximal strength, training with lower reps, i.e. eight to 12, will possibly outperform 20 reps and higher. And of course you can go lower than eight to 12, which will potentially outperform the eight to 12 as well. And you can combine rep ranges. So whilst this looks at two rep ranges specifically and exclusively, there's nothing to stop you doing it in a single workout or in a single training block. So this is just something, uh, a piece of research for you to understand so you can factor it into your own programs. There is no, you should try this. There is simply the knowledge that higher rep protocols can produce equal muscular strength in some exercises as well as equal muscular growth. How you interpret that and how you integrate that into your own training is down to your own individual circumstance. So that's it. I hope you found it interesting. If you've got any questions, my Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash Ben Carpenter personal training. My Twitter and Instagram pages are both BDC Carpenter. And thank you for watching. Bye.